So I went to the joint mathematics meeting about a week ago and so much happened during the conference that I wanted to make a vlog about it so I can revisit it later on and see what it was like. But the issue is that I was so overwhelmed during the conference that I didn't really take any photos or videos at the conference, which is a problem if you're trying to do something visual like make a video from it. But Matt Parker came to the rescue when he gave the five intersecting tetrahedra I gave him a while ago to someone else and then proceeded to demand that I owed him another one. But this also gives me the perfect idea for accompanying video to show while I talked about the JMM. Oh, by the way, I'm not actually disappointed. He gave this 500 second tetrahedra to someone else that is very prominent in the science communication world. And honestly, I feel kind of inspired. But, you know, it does mean that I owe him another 500 second tetrahedra. So let's go make that thing. The first thing to do was to pick out the paper. Since I knew exactly who this piece was going to be for, I decided to go with some pattern designer paper. I flipped through the three packs I had and marked the ones I liked. So there's... 635. I need to pick 5 out of. Okay. 11? 11? No. 14. After failing to do the basic algebra in my head, I proceeded to try and pick out the sheets that felt Matt Parker y. This has Matt vibes to it, right? I'm just going off. Oh, so does this. And get a good color palette. Okay. Which I also failed at, but more on that later. Um, I feel like there isn't too much of a variance in color right now though. It was time to run with my final selections and fold, but first I had to decide on a size. I'm thinking roughly travel size? The smallest 5 intersecting tetrahedra I've made is this big, whoa! And I'm definitely not going to attempt that size again. And the biggest one is this big. And this is definitely not travel sized. So I decided it was going to be something between these two sizes. And after looking at the stuff I had made in the past, I decided that... Okay, yeah, so, so I'm thinking half, which means I'd only need like the lower half of these paper, of these sheets of paper. Yeah, that sounds good. And was this whole thing just to show off all the FITs I have? I will let you decide. After ripping out the paper, I realized I hadn't talked about the joint mathematics meeting at all yet. So let's change that. Okay, so this is the plan. Right after we this. We have these five sheets of paper and we need to make them square by cutting along this dotted line. And then what I'm going to do is take half of the paper. And for each of these sheets of paper, we can make the six units that we need from half the sheet of paper. The units are going to be one by three. So the idea is take half of this, cut a quarter, and then cut each quarter into strips of thirds. And so from each of these, we can get six of these strips. And the six strips for the six sides of the tetrahedra and then with each tetrahedron we can combine these five different tetrahedra into the five intersecting tetrahedra yeah let's get started and finally talk about the joint mathematics conference or jmm so since math isn't really my thing i got to san francisco when it was already halfway over on the evening of thursday the 4th the plane got there late and i reached my hotel room at around 2 a.m there was this illustrating math meetup the next day at 9 a.m., so I went to bed to get up early the next day to see what the math community is really like. I was not prepared for the excitement that was about to hit. The day prior to the meetup, Glenn, the mathematician that was organizing the meetup, had posted details on the illustrating math Discord server, and I woke up the next day, hopped onto an Uber, and headed out. He said in the post to look for a large-ish geometric object, and so I immediately recognized the group even when I was still on the Uber, which was also when I saw the first person I recognized, Henry Segerman. If you don't know who Henry is, he creates these crazy mathematical mechanical mechanisms, and you should just leave this video now and go check out his stuff. He's made a geared cube net that folds into a cube with one degree of freedom, a grabber mechanism that you can play catch with, braided gears that grab onto each other while rotating, and various other counterintuitive gear mechanisms. He brought along all of these to the Illustrating Math meetup, and all of them were super fun to play with, 
And I know Henry doesn't like me saying this, but I had a surreal experience that YouTube had become real life. Like, look at that video upload date on a number file video. Seven years ago, I was in my sophomore to junior years in undergrad and was just starting to be exposed to a lot of these mathematical concepts. To say that number file, stand up maths, and yes, even you, Henry, impacted my math education would be an understatement. In a way, I stayed connected to math through these channels as I was going through my physics undergrad program and would try upper level math classes once in a while, but it just didn't come to me as easily as physics did. So I eventually backed off, but still stayed on the sidelines. Back to the illustrating math meetup though, in addition to Henry, so many other people showed up and just brought along absolutely incredible math objects. There was the slide glide cyclide made by Eric Virgo, a hyperbolic blanket from NAMA, someone brought along geodesic CNC onto different surfaces, and someone even had the nerve to bring himself as the interesting math object. The group was absolutely amazing and I kept meeting various people in this photo during my whole time at the conference. After the meetup, we went to the math art exhibit together and various people were at the open problem session and recreational math session hosted by Eric Demain. Before we talk about Eric though, right now in this video, I'm making some reference folds to exactly trisect the edge. If you're geometrically inclined, see if you can work out what I'm doing here. Okay, so Eric. He was giving a talk at 1pm, so I knew exactly where to find him after having lunch with some of the illustrating math people. Which, by the way, included Grant Sanderson, you know, just the creator now with over 2 million subscribers on Bilibili, so I'm definitely not bitter as Chinese Spirit has him in stand-up maths. Though seriously, Grant's team is amazing and Grant himself was really cool to chat with. Anyway, after saying goodbye to Grant and the others, I headed over to the conference to meet one of my heroes and see him finally give a talk in person. I walked to the room and immediately saw Eric in the front row. I slid in next to him and said hi. He showed me that Marty Domain was a few rows back, so I went to join him and squeezed by past Rihei O'Hara. During Eric's talk about optimizing for energy usage for computing in addition to time and space complexities, the room was overflowing with people. And after he got done, we went outside and properly greeted each other. This was the first time I had met Marty and Rihei, and they were both incredible. We chatted some and headed off to an open problem session Eric had organized, and did some super top secret recreational math research. While we were working, Henry Segerman was also there with his toys, and so whenever I got tired with theoretical constructions, I wondered over to Henry's table and just played with his experimental models. The time flew by and before I knew it, it was time for dinner, which I had plans made with a now San Francisco local friend from my undergrad, Ian Charnas, then manager of our machine shop and now a senior engineer for Mark Rover. And of course, I forgot to take a selfie with him, but we went to this absolutely amazing ramen place for dinner, which was right outside of a theater, the theater that they were hosting a math variety show in that night. Matt was emceeing the event, Tim and Tanya were amazing mimes, and Arthur Benjamin did his mental math magic on stage. I knew Tim and Tanya through my New York City trip to visit Matt about half a year ago, and Arthur Benjamin was another one of those math people that's been an inspiration for my math brain and got me to learn more algebra and mental math. At some point in my undergrad, I had all the squares of two-digit numbers memorized, so it was cool to chat with him about that and show him the Pi poster I still had on my wall from Pi Day 2016, which he immediately recognized as his handwriting. I of course also said hi to Tim and Tanya, and Matt was just all over the place being popular, but eventually the crowd dispersed and I got to chat with him for a bit. I finally got Matt to sign my books, we took some Parker Square t-shirt photos, and that was that. I mean, it's no Las Vegas, but it was a good show and boy what a night. But spoiler alert, it had nothing on the second night I was there. Let's go back to the origami for a second though, since we're reaching the critical step. The step to lock the chirality of the five intersecting tetrahedra in place. Alright, so here's the fun part. So um, the five intersecting tetrahedra has chirality. And right now, the, the third tetrahedron that goes on decides that chirality. So it could be locked like this or it could be locked like this. Um, and so let me let me just quickly make that lock. Right, okay. So if I wanted to lock it like this, I would put this piece on like so. And so now it's stuck in this handedness. But if I wanted to have the opposite chirality like this, I would put this piece on like so. Okay. 
That doesn't look right. That does not right. Like this. And now it's stuck in this handedness. That is also probably not right. Right, so I actually parkered that thing up and attached it wrong, but eventually I got there and fixed it. So the weird thing about these is when it's like partially assembled, it looks really, really non-symmetrical and really bad. But you kind of just have to develop that eye for like, oh yes, this looks good. And, you know, like I could already see the star forming. So one, two, three, four, five is going to be like that. And then the symmetries are um, each tetrahedra has another tetrahedra um, just completely within the three, um, the, the three sides. So, you know, this point is poking out of the, te the face of this tetrahedron. Um, and then on the exactly reverse side, this point is pointing out, poking out of the face of that tetrahedron. And this happens for all the pairs of tetrahedron. So here you can see this and this. And on the reverse side, it's this and this. And then I believe the last one we haven't looked at is yellow and this. So yellow and the white one, the, the arrowed one, is here. And on the reverse side, it looks like that. And when all five are assembled in, it looks a lot better because the symmetries are all there, whereas this has, just has partial symmetries. While the rest of the assembly is going on, let's quickly chat about my day 2 at JMM, also the final day at JMM. This was the day where I went to all the recreational math talks and met a wide variety of math superstars. People like Erno Rubik, inventor of the Rubik's Cube, Chime Goodman Strauss, co-author on the now famous Monotile paper, and Donald Knuth, who went to the same undergrad university as I did. And according to his Wikipedia page, he also studied physics, which, cool! The whole day was mostly talks and lots of people posed lots of open problems for attendees to think about. And after the talks were done and the conference wrapped up, I walked up to join Eric, Marty, and Rihei, and Marty started talking about dinner. Clara, a former Domain Group student, also walked up, and so I thought it was just gonna be like the five of us going out to this restaurant that Marty was talking about. So, you know, I was expecting a relatively chill night, nothing too exciting. And boy was I wrong. Turns out I was about to crash a dinner gathering with some of the world's most prominent mathematicians, but I didn't know it at the time. So while chatting with Marty, he told me that someone else had invited him and Eric and Rihei to a dinner outing, but I should ask if I can join. And so I did, and learned that there were like 18 others coming to the dinner, which in retrospect should have been my first clue as to what type of dinner I was crashing, but I was nerd Alice at the time and didn't pick up on that cue. So I went to this restaurant with Clara and we found some seats and sat down. And slowly people started trickling in. People like Donald Knuth, Chaim Goodman Strauss, Bob Hearn who is organizing the Gathering for Gardener conference this year. And I sat next to Ingrid Dobchi and just had this really amazing dinner and chatted about everything from Veritasium to comic books. I didn't know who she was at the time and she was like absolutely super nice at the dinner. So I went back home and googled her and wow is she impressive. And at the end of the dinner, Chan gave a few of us a handful of these with the instruction to see if we can prove they tile periodically. I brought them home with me and I am satisfied to say that I have come up with a periodic tiling of these things and Chan says it's the smallest tiling so you know, I know math. And yes, I was still interacting with JMM stuff after I got back home. In fact, I'm currently trying to work out how to print this fun little thing for Henry Segerman. But we don't have any time for now and that will have to wait until another time because this brand new 500 second tetrahedra has been born. And uh, so, yeah, Matt, um, next time we meet in person, this is yours. The colors came out decent. The yellow and brown kind of stand out as somewhat of outliers on the color palette, which is why I say I failed at choosing a color palette. But you know, lesson learned, you either have all the colors, so this is definitely mi missing like the blues and the purples, or you just choose like one color base and go with it. So you don't have to use kind of, you know, Parker color standing out. And you know, it's not exactly travel sized, but I'll make it work. For now though, Parker will join his family of five intersecting Parker Hedra. I guess it's on brand for Parker stuff, right? <laughs>